Hello everybody, my name is Eric Wood and welcome to Eric Talks, a show where I talk about things that are important to me. Let's jump right into it. First thing on today's docket is North Korea, specifically their fifth nuclear detonation. Very recently, a 5.0 earthquake was recorded in the mainland of North Korea. Given that there was no fault line anywhere near where the detonation went off, this is assumed to be another nuclear detonation as a part of North Korea's nuclear program. So essentially, North Korea is getting better at making nuclear explosives quicker. You see, even though North Korea has, like, a decent nuclear program, they don't have a decent nuclear delivery system. I mean, North Korean rocket science is not exactly up to par with the rest of the world. So as long as they can't deliver those nuclear explosives we're not really in too much trouble. Now, North Korea just isn't really good at rocket science but the fact is the better and better they get at being a nuclear nation the more and more danger Japan, Seoul, and a couple islands off the coast of Alaska have to be worried and so it's not too much of a concern yet but the simple fact is that when a failing state has access to nuclear explosives as North Korea does there's some cause for concern in the international community. So we're not too concerned yet, but there's still some reason to be concerned. Next on today's docket is the Palestinian President Muhammad Abbas. Documents have recently been released suggesting the possibility that President Muhammad might have been a KGB agent during the Cold War. This was first reported on by Israel's Channel One News. But there's some reasons that you should be questioning the validity of these documents. These documents were released at a time when Israel and Palestine were supposed to sit down at the negotiation table and try to figure out a solution to the ongoing conflict. And on top of that, this meeting was organized and sponsored by the Russian government. So the idea of making Palestine and the Russians look like bad guys might be in Israel's best interest right now. The other reason that you should be a little skeptical of these documents is that it specifically said that President President Muhammad's KGB code name was Mol. So the document's essentially saying that this was a conversation that happened. All right, you are going to be a spy for us. Fantastic. What's my code name? Spy. Something about that doesn't stand up to Cold War snuff. We have this report that President Muhammad of Palestine could have been a former KGB agent, but there's also reasons to question this report. The point is that it's not good for Israeli-Palestine relationships and the general situation in the Middle East right now. In some slightly less political news, the nurse in the famous V-Day photograph of a nurse kissing a sailor has recently passed away. Greta Friedman was 92 years old when she passed away in an assisted living home in Friedman, Virginia. What's very interesting about this is that this woman has evolved from a single human being into a cultural symbol. She is the victory of World War II. That's what she represents. And so her passing is kind of significant. And I think it's important to stop and think about that. Her passing is of kind of significance because she's not just a person. She is a symbol of victory and the World War II mentality of like America is the good guys and we beat the bad guys and we should celebrate that and so it's kind of significant. Anyway that about wraps up the news portion of the show and now it's time to think deep. Today's show is brought to you by death. Death! We're all going to die. It's inevitable. No one's going to live for very long. At best, you are going to live for a hundred years. As a matter of fact, if I believe the United States Census, I am only going to live until I am 75 years old, meaning that I am well over a quarter of the way done with my life. You're going to die, and 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 everybody's going to die! And unless you believe in incarnation, no matter how you slice it, you are going to be dead infinitely longer than you are going to be alive. My personal opinion, and you have the right to disagree with me on this, I find that people make the most mistakes when they believe they're immortal. And also, I believe that people are fundamentally better when they remember they're not going to live forever. Seriously, as a college student, I can say one of the fundamental evils of life is procrastination. Oh, I'll do that tomorrow. Oh, I'll take care of that later. Oh, I have time. Well, no, you don't. Like I said, I'm a quarter of the way done with my life, which means I have about 75% of it left to enjoy. And the question of how I'm going to spend that 75% is something that keeps me up at night. Something that's been even more significantly on my mind than usual ever since news broke that this woman died. Even symbols die. 
Now, there's certain ways that people can respond to the fact they're going to die. The first, and by far most common, is to just completely ignore it. Go through life, assume you're immortal, until suddenly, you're not. We are a culture that tends to embrace ignorance of our demise. We prefer to fill our lives with phones and soda and food and temporary pleasures, thinking that it will bring us happiness, but ultimately having no eternal value. The second option is that you can run around like a chicken with your head cut off and try to do literally everything ever. I tend not to like this idea because, quite frankly, that's exhausting and I don't have that much energy. And on top of that, that perspective is pretty darn selfish. You end up missing a lot of what's great about life, like helping other people. Being inherently selfish usually doesn't lead to a good life. I mean, by blindly, pers I mean, by blindly pursuing your own personal pleasures, you completely miss out on opportunities like deep meaningful community and relationships and just general communion with people who are in the same boat as you. And I think that that's an important part of life that honestly shouldn't be neglected. The third option are people who try to live a good life and people who love extravagantly. Simple fact is that while you're alive, you have the capacity to do things. You have the capacity to act. And I believe the most noble way to act is to show love to other people. We are all going to die. How people respond to the fact of their own mortality reveals more about them than pretty much anything else in their life. Because your time is limited, there are some things that are valuable and there are some things that are meaningless. And how you choose between those things reveals an awful lot about your personality. Probably a lot more than online quizzes about which Disney character you are. Wow, that was a very morbid couple of minutes. Anyway, that about wraps up the show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. You are a beautiful human being. Try to change the world today. And as always, sincerely yours, Eric Wood. Sorry for that kind of morbid rant there. Went a little crazy. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, you can click on North and South America. Uh, if you'd like to watch more videos, we got yourself Oceania and Asia over there. Just click on one of them and, you know, you can subscribe or watch more videos. It's really up to you, you know, or you could run out the clock. That's, that's perfectly legitimate as well. Once again, I just want to really quickly say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your constant support and everything. Those of you who like, comment, subscribe, and all of that, it means the world to me. Thank you for your support, and uh, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video.